Yo, GPJ here. Top 3 reasons why you should clear MOC right now. Jades. 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 Memory of Chaos is Honkai Star Rail's endgame, where the frequent visitors are the many tryhards wanting to post their zero cycle Yan Cheng, coping that he's still the best DPS. Spoiler, it's not. Or some out of luck players blowing their entire life savings as well as their left tonsils for an E6 S5 Acheron. Spend responsibly, people. And now scraping the bottom of the barrel for a couple of jades and a dime. This game mode is where many of us will spend some or most of our time trying to actually test the strength of our accounts and ironing out what needs to be improved. The majority of the casual player base, however, shudders at the thought of clearing this endgame mode, treating it as more of a chore or maybe even an obstacle. Now I'm here to tell you that you should play however you want in this game because it's a single player game and my opinion on the internet doesn't really matter. However, if you're looking to clear MOC with full stars, I'm here to help you with changing that perspective. That MOC is such a chore, I can't really do it, what should I do? I'm here to help you with that. I will help you change that mindset and making you more comfortable with this game mode. In order to help you with your first clear at full stars, I've come up with the account progression checkpoints. This contains many tips and general advice that for the people that seek out endgame is very obvious to them. Yet for you, the casuals turn intermediate players willing to try the MOC is brain spanking new knowledge. This advice also applies to those that have already cleared all 12 floors, yet somehow always fall short of the 36 stars or the maximum rewards. If you're willing to try, then this video is for you. My name is GPJ and welcome to my Memory of Chaos guide. There are three tips, big tips, that I'm willing to give out. And then after that, we'll have a couple of lightning rounds of advices. Let's start with the big one first. Maybe you're in a boat where you invested in most of the units that you need for Memory of Chaos. But I need to ask you this question. How much investment? Now, on an account-to-account -account basis, each one is always different, both on their level of actual investment on their relics, but maybe on their basic understanding and knowledge of the eight characters used in their Memory of Chaos run. Maybe in your account, you have a crack Jing Yuan, you have a 7200, 8220, no, 134 speed Jing Yuan, but somehow you have him on a 70 to 70, and you're not unlocking his Ascension 6, that might give him that extra advantage in battle. Or maybe in your account, you have a Ron Mei that are well geared, but having issue with surviving. And then you found out that you have her on a 6970, nice, and somehow gave her a ice damage boost instead of a survivability orb because they thought her ice break damage is important. Look, I'm not judging how much everyone's gonna invest their time into this game because everyone's scenarios and priorities are always different. Should you be committed to clearing MOC, at least try to learn or search up guides on what to look for. Now, generally for me, I'm a firm believer that you can always get away with 70 plus ascended out of 80 for your DPSs and most of the popular supports just to maximize their big notes or their big ascension trace. Some are better than others. While for some level scaling supports, are preferably to be at max level. Now, what I mean by level scaling supports are, let's say for example, some break damage supports or sub DPSs, like a Ron Mei or maybe like a Luca, or maybe a, a DPS that scales harder from break effect, like a Sushang or maybe even a Serval, as well as some abundance units to help with their survivabilities. People like a Locha or Huo Ho, Maybe even a Fu Xuan, or Japard, or Gallagher are some examples. Ultimately, level improvements to some characters might be that difference maker. No, this doesn't only apply to what you directly invest in your characters, the levels, the relics, but can also attribute to how knowledgeable and flexible you are towards different options available to you. In other words, knowledge. Knowledge is power, and keeping an open mind and keeping your options open is power. I'll give you an example. Back when the meme came out for the first time, 
I'm having a hard time clearing the big bastard due to how hard it hits my team and the uh, the instant death mechanic, or as I like to call it, Zvarok, but with extra steps, is pissing me off for my ratio hyper carry team. Brute forcing it time and time again to no avail, I immediately felt like there's gotta be a better option for my team. And then I started focusing on the questions. Is my DPS good? My ratio is fine. Is my supports are good? My supports, which was Branya and Runmei, are fine. Is my Nihility unit up to par? My Nihility unit is not up to par because I was using Pella. And then I started zeroing in on who in my account can apply debuffs more. I started looking at the roster of my characters that could work and isolate the elements. And also I started to wonder whether or not my sustain, which was Fu Xuan at the time, actually helped with my purpose of clearing it. In that Venn diagram of thinking about clearing my sustain and thinking about debuffing the enemy, while also keeping my core of Ratio, Branya, and Ron May, I found the solution. Lo and behold, my E2 will rose to the top of the litter. Now, the problem is my wealth was on a DPS build, and I kind of need him to support Ratio by debuffing. And also, I needed wealth to be our sustainer in exchange for Fu Shuang. So I needed to change his gear to where he can apply multiple debuffs consistently for ratio while also sustaining the team. The option is to use his ult consistently. Basically, I'm playing well to sustain my option with a focus on debuffing the team. From going to 19 cycles and multiple 16s after a few retries, to clearing floor 12 in 23 cycles, 5 out of 5 times. Of course, this is just one example from my own experience. Keep learning and investigate and find a solution because the solution will somehow always be much closer than you think. Now, maybe you have no issues with what your team call, but you built the most important units properly. Everyone's teams will always be different and everyone's priorities will always be different. It differs from patch to patch and account to account, but some of the universal rules that can be applied here are if you're lacking damage, you invest a bit more into the DPS or the support for said DPS. Check your levels. Is it 70 plus or is it 80? Do you need it to be 80? Because again, that is such a big investment. Check your light cone levels. Light cone levels are permanent upgradable thing that can be applied should you choose to use that light cone for another character and the value only goes up. Check the big trace nodes after the ascensions. Maybe you didn't unlock one of them or maybe you're discounting that uh, that big node that you don't feel like you're gonna level up earlier and then it turns out to be a difference maker. And then check the small nodes, the stat nodes for a little bit extra of stats that you need, the HP percent, the attack, the speed, all those stuff. And finally, any relic that could give you a tiny bit of boost of damage or a tiny bit of boost of extra stat. In my opinion, stats over set most of the time, always. If you're playing supports and you don't have the stats to give them, just go with the two piece of whatever you feel like it's the most important and the other one don't really care. Prioritize the stats for them and just go with whatever you have. It might look bad, but remember, you need to clear. It doesn't matter if it looks bad for you. If it's good and it gets you clears, you don't really care. Stats over sets matter if you're actually gonna build multiple characters and you have multiple sets of relics that are left over, but somehow didn't really fit the cut. In order to compensate for the survivability issue, you can try to clear both halves in under 10 cycles and then retry again but with an adequate sustain if you die while trying to clear under 10 cycles it's fine because the next time you try it with a sustain it still counts as an added star again the checklists are character levels light cones traces and then relics the third and in my opinion the most underrated one is understanding and taking advantage of the Memory of Chaos buff. Remember that the buff favors the current limited character the most 
or characters with similar kit. Now, this one's a bit short compared to the previous point. Basically, a direct way for the devs to both help you clear the memory of chaos and also market the limited characters during the banner release date is designing the MOC or Pure Fiction buffs. In their name, it's called Memory Turbulence to directly help the limited character the most when the Kafka banner was released for the first time. The Memory Turbulence giving Defense Shred to every single enemy if you can defeat the Trotter. Now this favors Kafka teams greatly as the dot she triggers will be dealing more damage. This buff helps me clear Memory of Chaos 30 stars for the first time in my playing days. But every single Memory of Chaos after that, I continually see fall short of full stars until the meme one, where due to various reasons, of which are reasonable enough, and also some reasons that are absolutely out of pocket, like uh, ignoring slash not fully investing in Ting Yun and Branya at the start of the game. I was young and naive, please don't judge me. At some point in time, you'll be able to clear Memory of Chaos consistently without relying on the memory turbulence too much or the buffs too much with enough game knowledge and investment in related units. Or you know, just spend your stamina, refill, you know, swipe the credit card, you know. As you grow your character pool, you'll notice that the buffs they give will increase the effectiveness on similar kits of certain characters. The first time Imbibido Lune came out, the Memory Turbulence directly favors him due to the skill point consumption directly translates to damage when the cycle ends. Now, this buff works with Imbibido Lune, but you know who else it works at? Our resident Mahjong enthusiast, Ching Chui or QQ for you English speakers. Her value rose exponentially alongside Imbabiru Rune, conquering the bug boss while simultaneously giving a paradigm shift to those that undervalue QQ. Like the old saying, a rising tide raises all ships. In short, line according to the Memory of Chaos buff, if you feel like you need that extra bit of um. To your account. Now I'll give you some lightning round ones, the quick ones. The first one, don't be afraid to experiment with what actually works for your account. Even if this content creator, your friend, your grandma, XYZ says that the character you used isn't meta. Remember, it's your game, it's still your rules. You're gonna clear MOC with Arlen DPS? Shoot, go for it. Gonna play DPS Gallagher? Go wild. You're gonna play a DPS Locha with Huo Huo support and, you know, if I can read Kafka, go for it. Now, second, if you have necessary characters yet you don't fight, find success, switch up the builds, experiment. Finding what works in your scenario is always a hassle, but getting creative with what you have is the key. My wealth example mentioned before is a great example of seeing what works for my scenario and building a plan accordingly. Or maybe, like, let's say for example, you have a physical weak enemy and your only physical DPS is a uh, Su Xiong. Now your Su Xiong is on a traditional DPS build and you notice that you're breaking them a lot yet you don't have unnecessary damage to go through. If you're breaking with her most of the time, why not invest a little bit more into break effect? You know, find that break effect piece or the break effect substance that helps you get to that desired goal to get that extra bit of damage. And who knows, maybe by breaking them for more damage, you might get that extra cycle a little bit quicker. Third, take your time with the memory of chaos and pure fiction. It resets every 42 days or six weeks with a new one added alternatingly every four weeks. Every four weeks, a new memory of chaos, and after that, a new pure fiction. In my experience, it's plenty of time to build three characters and focusing on their traces. Now, you might not have that perfect relic set, or you might not, you might be running them on a rainbow set, but if it clears, it still clears. It looks ugly, but it still clears. If all else fails, and you're looking to get a limited 5 star, maybe your solution is with them, a limited 5 star character. In my opinion, 
prioritize supports over DPS most of the time. Now, I'm a big believer in supports, specifically the buffers, the Rame, the Branya, the not the Branya, yeah, the Branya, the Sparkle, or maybe Robin in the future. Because your baseline clear will increase not only for the team, but for your whole account. You can use that limited 5 star character in that specific scenario, but after that support will always be in your rotation or will always be in that top recommendation of what units should you use. So in long-term investment, it'll be better. For the DPSs, there's always better ways, there's always a bigger way to you know deal damage. But most of them are limited in their own factors. But the supports are the difference maker most of the time. Get the Ronme, get the Sparkle. And like I said, maybe get the Robin in the future because maybe she looks to be a game changer. Bottom line, supports over DPS 90% of the time. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. I I'm curious, leave a comment below on what's your first team to clear Memory of Chaos with full stars. I'm looking forward to that. And Kofi link in the description if you're willing to support my work. Subscribe if you enjoyed it. I uploaded Hawkeye Star videos as of now. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, see you around. Bye bye.